Have you had this? It's not yet. This not is yet. not good. Whiskey and Monster Energy Drink is not good. Oh. <laughs> no wonder why it's got this swamp color to it. <laughs> <laughs> What's up YouTube and welcome to another episode of Whiskey Business. My name's Josh. And I'm Mike. And we're here to let you know just how drunk you have to be to watch the original 1982 Blade Runner. I need the old Blade Runner. Blade Runner. This is a In honor of Blade Runner. Blade Runner. <laughs> Blade Runner. Hey, come over here Blade Runner. Stop running with the brain! <laughs> In honor of Blade Runner 2049 coming out, we decided we should do like a retro review of the original Blade Runner from 1982. I'll bust out my old Voigt Kampf collector's edition what? that I bought for too much monies a long time ago. Look at all the shit in here. They got Jesus. cars. Got a little horsey. Nice. They even put a freaking DVD of the movie oh, in look, here. Look, you even get the movie. <laughs> they said, good luck putting this somewhere. <laughs> good luck telling your wife you have a briefcase that you can't put anything inside of it except for a DVD covered with a bunch of toys. <laughs> yeah, so we decided to do a review of the original to get us prepped, ready, and up to date for mm -hmm. the sequel. And that's good because I think I fell asleep the last time I watched this movie. <laughs> I think it's so cute how they thought 2019 was going to turn out. <laughs> yeah. Their vision of the future was so optimistic. Exactly. Flying cars, giant pyramids, huge holographic signs, robots that you can't tell are people. And right now we're dealing with Nazis. <laughs> yeah. 2017 and we're dealing with so little things that are in this movie. <laughs> exactly. No it, flying cars. No. Everyone's offended about everything. <laughs> no killer robots. The set design of this movie is incredible. They don't make movies like this. No. The sets, the, the practical effects, everything's miniatures. The, all the sets are so fucking dense. Every every apartment building, there's shit just everywhere. That's right. new bottles of alcohol. I noticed that because I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> Seeing Harrison Ford's apartment is just, you see the shit that's everywhere and it kind of like tells his backstory in a yeah. way. I mean, the whole idea of like these robots having this self-conscious mind and they don't want to yeah. die and therefore like all of a sudden they're just hit with the realization that they're robots, like that was really interesting because you have to imagine that this was back in the 80s, early 80s, yeah. which we now have in almost every fucking sci-fi yeah. movie now. The sets alone Nowadays, that shit would just be green screen shit. Yeah, yeah. You just see people walking down the hallways with just green screen hover cars and lights and crazy shit. Like, they built this shit. Right. There was a dude with little tiny magnifying glasses just painting a model for fucking hours on end, and that yeah. was his job. <laughs> I would say, I hope in the sequel they make the Voigtkampf test a little faster. <laughs> Okay, up to today's standards, this movie is pretty fucking slow. It's extremely yeah. slow. And I know they're going for a whole film noir, old school 50s detective thing, but it's fucking slow. <laughs> and they're sitting down doing this test with the, the replicants and they're just asking him like, you're in a bar and you notice a girl across the bar. She seems interested in you, but yet she has a large cold sore above her upper lip. Do you take the chance? I pass. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking dumb robot. We all would have took the chance, okay? You just kiss her on the left side of the mouth, you dumb idiot. This movie has, hands down, the most absurd enhanced scene I've ever seen in a movie. And it's probably the first time it's ever been done of someone sitting at a computer terminal looking at a, a picture and saying enhance as it zooms in. And this fucking Polaroid oh my they got. Gosh. How many fucking pixels do this thing have? Because. <laughs> He puts a Polaroid in a machine and he zooms in on a mirror that's in the back corner and is able to zoom in close enough to see the perfect outline of a girl's face and a tattoo on her chin. Are you fucking high, Ridley Scott? <laughs> Go to B72, <laughs> zoom in. You sunk my battleship. <laughs> Rutger Hauer, who plays Roy the villain, he's fantastic. Oh yeah. He's super creepy, super fucking weird but super interesting. Although I have to say, I don't really understand the way he had to take his clothes off in the end. 
That's because you run faster. <laughs> I would give Blade Runner a buzzed. <clears throat> it's only shortcoming really is that it's just so fucking slow compared to like today's standards of movies that have action beats every 10 minutes and I mean, how do you have a movie with a bunch of flying cars and not one of them that gets into a police chase? <laughs> so I am also giving this movie, Blade Runner, a buzzed as well. I mean, I really enjoyed it. I thought like the story was good. I'm excited about seeing the next one. I hope that Harrison Ford just isn't in the first 10 minutes of the movie and then he's out and that type of thing. Watch this movie to catch you up for the upcoming one. If right. you don't see this, don't watch the sequel. You're not gonna fucking understand right. it. You're literally gonna be like, okay, so he's a cop? When does he run away from the blades? <laughs> what seems to be the problem? Death. I want more life. Cheers. Until next time, remember to like, comment, subscribe, watch this movie, get ready for our Blade Runner review, because that's coming up in two weeks. Week? I don't know. Soon? Sometime? <laughs> it's coming up. It's coming up. And then we got American Me coming out. Yeah, do it. Watch it. Tell your friends. <laughs>